So minus five this morning, not sure how that's happened. It was two and a half degrees when I set off this morning at five, uh, five o'clock. I got to the gym, uh, it was four and a half degrees and now I've set off to work and it's 0.5. Don't know how that is. Now we've got to wash an SVR. I'm hoping it's not going to freeze on me as we're doing it. It's just going to take forever. It, it is going to freeze on me. We know it is. Um, it's actually covered in a lot of salt from the... Obviously, they've been salting the roads, gritting the roads. There's a lot of salt and grime on this vehicle. And that does mean we have to do a lot of pre-wash prep and rinsing and really using the jet wash. And as you say, the SVR's in for detailing, but it doesn't mean we should be marking the paint when not washing it or incorrectly washing it just because it's absolutely blathered in dirt and salt. It does mean we're going to be spending three or four hours in the freezing cold washing this vehicle because it needs to be done safely. And I'm going to show you how much salt and dirt is actually on the vehicle at the minute and the reason why we really need to pre-wash this properly. Just finished washing and prepping the SVR. Uh, do apologise for the red nose and the hat air. It's freezing outside, but we're in the booth now. The heaters are on. It's quite toasty in here. Uh, we're just going to basically go around the SVR now, kind of check what needs to be done, and just check it over now. It's actually been properly cleaned and in the actual real booth. First thing we can notice is the swell marks on the bonnet, especially on the carbon area. They're quite. I'd say quite bad, they're visible, they're very, very visible. Uh, there isn't actually that many on them, but they are very noticeable. The grey hides a hell of a lot, so that's kind of a, in the customer's favour, um, especially in regards to the ceramic coatings, because it's obviously a little bit tougher, not as soft as a black paint. But there is swirls across the whole panel. The blacks are typically marked, that's just always, it's just one of those things that happen all the time. You can't really do anything about the plastics. We notice on Range Rovers, the black panels on here are always just as badly marked. I don't know if that's from when they go to car washers and they're actually on brush mushers uh, because they're obviously quite high, so I don't know how you mark those as much. It's got to be something related to that, really. The things that we're noticing on this is, this is the typical kind of SVR and Range Rover kind of defects. And it's the carbon parts that you see here, uh, they're quite badly marked and they need to be fixed, but they're very, very tricky to get to. We're going to try and fix the door handle because it's typical SVR again, or Range Rover, they, all Range Rovers just do it, but the door handle came off with the air blower. So we're going to make sure that's obviously bonded on properly so it doesn't come off because they, they always fall off and it's always this side. Um, the plastic trims on SVRs especially, they can be quite badly fitted and we find that sometimes these actually do come loose. So we're going to be checking those for the customer um, just as part of the job, just from us knowing what they've done in the past. But the rest of the carbon, which this car is actually covered in carbon, um, is really good condition. The grill is in really good condition. However, I'm going to be honest, there's a few areas in the little grooves here, right in the corners that I'm not happy with how they're cleaned outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to get them up on the ramp and we're actually going to steam clean those because I'm not just going to rub them. Um, and that's something we do quite a lot is steam cleaning, especially like under chassis. And we do it with the wet floor we've got here. And that's because a, sometimes when you wash a car, even though you spent hours on it, we've actually started washing this about quarter past eight, I think it was. And it's now 20 past 12. So we spent quite a bit of time just washing the car. There's still a few areas that aren't perfect and that's because the dirt looked like it were gone and it's dried and we won't rub aggressively or use brushes like a lot of companies in certain areas because you're actually going to mark those panels. Um, it's a little bit like the badgers. When you see people basically using detailing brushes on badgers, yet it cleans them, yet it gets them absolutely spotless, but the reality is it puts marks in the paint in those areas because the dirt is getting rubbed around with a brush, even if it's the softest brush in the world. And this vehicle, as you saw in the video clips a minute ago, was horrendously dirty and it's very thick sort of clay and grit and granite. That's in the badges. So if we use the detailing brush like in these YouTube videos you see, which look amazing, and you think people have really gone to town cleaning them and done such a high-end job, you're actually marking the panels. So what we do is we steam those areas and that's how we get them perfectly clean and we do it safely. So we're gonna be doing that with a few little bits like the bottom of the sills and across the arches because I wanna get them just that little bit cleaner so they are absolutely perfect in the grooves that we can't see and if there's any dirt kind of hidden between the seams and I want the steam cleaner to do that for Thank you. 
I've just completed the first stages of the 9H coating on this uh, SVR, but there's one thing that's really, really bugging me, and it's something I'm going to have to fix, and I've just remembered we actually had to do this on the last SVR we had in, so it's obviously a common issue. It's nothing major, but it's something that really does bug me. Now, basically, the badge on here uh, has gone pink, as you can probably see. It's not red anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get a piece of vinyl. I'm going to basically shrink wrap over the top of it, trim it down with the blade, and make that come back red again. Um, it's the only way you can do it. I'm not going to paint it or anything. We're just because it's actually vinyl within the badge anyway. But I think we need to do that before we do any more coatings because it's something that this car's literally missing. And the one thing that kind of really stands out is it's not red anymore. Um, so let's get on with that and get it changed. Get it, you know, see how much that little thing actually makes quite a big improvement. So what we've got now is the tiny little bit of the R that needs to be done. We needed to cut that out because we still want the chrome of the R to actually be right. But as you can see just there, there's still a little bit of black. So we're just going to do the final little bit on there, push that in with the tools we've got. The button. 